are we sort of set to, what are going to be the catalyst for us to sort of fire beyond just today? It does look like we are set for a good start, but the key thing that I'm going to be watching on the markets today are the volumes going through. Last week was absolutely dismal in terms of values traded per day. In fact, we didn't even manage to break that $4 billion mark, but with most schools back uh, for the next term, uh, today we should see some uh, more normalised volumes going through the market and all schools will be back by the end of the week. So by the end of the week, hopefully we're back to some solid healthy volumes on the Aussie market. But the leads for our market have been very strong. The US session was a very positive one. As you mentioned, JP Morgan coming in a little bit above expectations and the financial stocks really rallying quite strongly there. We also saw some uh, a rally in commodity prices. Copper prices uh, were up. We saw gold prices higher and oil prices higher. BHP managed a gain of 2 2% in terms of the ADR. So all up, it does look like a good start, supported by the miners and the financial stocks on the market. This week is going to be a massive week for the miners. We see quarterly production reports coming through and really the big guns are out. Tomorrow we see Rio Tinto and Fortescue with their quarterly numbers. On Wednesday we see BHP Billiton and then Thursday is all about the energy stocks. We'll see Santos and Woodside Petroleum come, coming through. And of course the US is going to have an absolutely massive week, around about 50% of the S&P 500 companies are due to report earnings. So uh, all lies firmly on the U.S. earnings season and the quarterly production reports coming out of the miners. Stock specific, Whitehaven Coal, uh, the price action was kind of one way last week towards the end and that was down. Uh, a nice kind of moment then to launch a bid to take it private, right? When, it, when you've seen um, that stock battered into sort of fairly weak territory. You're right. We have seen the shares battered in 2012. In fact, the shares down by 30% this year so far. And that's on the back of thermal coal prices, which have dropped around about 20% this year to be trading at $90 a ton. But if we have a look at Whitehaven Coal, the shares are due to pop today. On the upside, we've seen that official bid coming through from a Tinkler-led group. $5.20 cash offer. Now that offer is 50% greater than the closing price on Friday. So no doubt that Whitehaven Coal is going to be one of the best performing stocks, if not the best performing stock on the Aussie market today. If we have a look at this bid, Tinkler already owns 21.4% uh, of this company and he's saying that about 48% of shareholders are, are, are considering joining the uh, Tinkler-led bid vehicle. So altogether it looks like this one has a pretty good chance of succeeding. If we have a look at Whitehaven Coal, its assets of course in the Gunnedah Basin, Basin from that merger with the Aston Group which uh, Tinkler was behind and also some assets in the Hunter as well as in Queensland. So this bid at $5.20 cash looking very attractive compared to uh, the prices that Whitehaven Coal has been trading at last week and it does look like a pretty good chance of success for this one spending their dividend uh, reinvestment plan uh, off the back of all of this? Well, a massive cut in terms of the dividend, and I guess yeah. that's a danger for shareholders and investors who are going out and chasing yield. When you do see these attractive yields of 15% or greater in terms of the dividend yield, there is a strong signal that you're going to see a cut in dividends, and that's exactly what we've seen with Seven West Media today. They've cut their dividend payment down to $0.06 cents from $0.26, cents, so a huge cut there. So anyone who has been chasing this stock for yield will be sorely disappointed but this capital raising absolutely expected the the speculation really ramped up after that April profit downgrade that we saw coming through from the company and also once again after 10 did that capital raising for 200 million dollars uh, the speculation that 10 was just getting in ahead of a bigger one from seven West media we've seen that come through today I think while initially we may see some weakness in terms of the share price and the share price did reach a 52 week low last week what we will see is a bit of a cloud being lifted from seven West Media shares and now they'll be able to focus in on the structural and the cyclical issues which are key challenges for them. Um, Julia, also we've got a heap of production reports out today which, which Carson flagged a short time ago. Um, we've already had gold miner Northern Star out with some numbers today. We've got Panost with some numbers today as well but uh, through the week uh, big names, BHP, Fortescue, Woodside, Santos, you name it. So what are we preparing for in terms of some of the main themes that will come out of this? I think one of the things we're looking for in terms of the gold miners um, are, are the costs involved and also the prices that they're getting because we have seen gold uh, costs, uh, gold prices under quite a bit of pressure. Now we have seen uh, Northern Star coming out and they've actually come out with a pretty good report. Uh, we've seen them come out with their production up by a massive 43% while their cash costs have been down by around about 20 9%. So a really uh, strong uh, strong report coming out. And I guess Northern Star's been one of those gold miners which have really 
really buck the trend. If we have a look at this particular company, in the last year we've seen its shares up by 60%, unlike a lot of the gold miners out there. But in the last month, its shares have been coming under a fair bit of pressure and the shares have been down by 19%. No doubt this very strong quarterly production report will help to support the share price today. Panos, it's mainly a copper uh, producer, but what we do see is the gold uh, credits that uh, come out really reduce the cash cost. And that's the key risk in this quarterly production report that, that comes out today, that we will see the cash cost increasing because the estimate that the company is using in terms of gold prices is still 1800 US an ounce. And we know that gold prices are significant below, significantly below that. So one thing the market's going to be watching is the cash cost in terms of production. Uh, the copper results should be quite strong. We saw the March quarter uh, uh, a very strong one, so we're waiting for the panels. But as you mentioned, the big ones are really going to be on Tuesday and Wednesday where we do see Rio, Fortescue and then BHP on Wednesday.